Today, I'm here with Yuri Budnik, and he has a really interesting use case for Coda. He actually completely replaced his Jira workspace with Coda, and we're going to walk through what that looks like, how he did it. So Yuri, thank you so much for walking us through what you did. Thanks, thanks for being here. Sure thing. Yeah, thank nice you. to be here with you all. A, a quick intro, I'm Yuri Budnik. I am the head of product strategy for Trade Dash. We're a small software company, software as a service. We're small, so I do a lot of things besides just head of product strategy. That's just the, the title. And yes, we were Jira users for more than two years, maybe more like three and a half. And I started using Coda a little bit and it quickly be clear, became very clear to me how it would be much better to manage the backlog because it would be easier to sort, prioritize, filter in different ways. And we started there and then we ended up moving completely off of Jira into 100% Coda. And it was just me creating a document and customizing it. And one of the great things about it is that we were able to build the workflow to be exactly what we wanted it to be, as opposed to having to adapt to the way Jira works. That was a really big plus for us. Can you see my screen? I cannot tell if I'm sharing the screen or not. Yeah, we can see your screen. I can see your screen. Yeah. Uh, and so in your role, can you so, walk us through like what in the before, what you were, how your team was using Jira and how you're tracking issues, all that good stuff? Yeah, so we do one week sprints. We used to do two weeks at some point, we moved to one week. So throughout the week, I would record tickets and they would just appear at the very bottom of this very long list. Mm -hmm. And they were not very easy to catalog in different ways. Even though Jira has a feel for labels or tags and you can do some things, I always struggled with how to make it really work for me. I spent a little bit of time looking into customizing it and I just gave up because it seemed like it was too much work. And I would literally click on tickets here. This is not live anymore. So I'm going to make a change that doesn't matter anymore. And I would just move things to the top of the backlog. And then I would move with, uh, and I would move a whole bunch of tickets there. And then I would meet with the engineering lead. And I would say, look, these, these 10 tickets, let's talk about these. That was the extent of the workflow. And then mm -hmm. he would put some of those in the current sprint and they would go into our Kanban board and they would move through the process. That was the extent of what we did there. And compare and contrast that with what we do in Coda. And I'm using the same logo just to avoid confusion. This is Coda over here, and this is the old Atlassian Jira. Is I can create tickets. Actually, I'm going to go to a. a actually, yeah, I'll, I'll. I can. I can delete it later. I have a page just for creating tickets, and we were able to define all the fields exactly as we want them, and keeping track of the backlog here. I'm going to go to all tickets. First, this page that I have over here. So I have a bunch of columns and here's filters for everything that I have that makes it really easy for me to slice it and dice it in any kind of way that I want. I have one field that I use called on deck with my name, this one. So things that I'm paying attention to, I set that to yes. And usually over the weekend, I end up reviewing anything that's that falls in this category. So I like that I can see how many I have and I group them by the category. And then the ones that I think we should discuss in the morning, in the Monday morning planning meeting, I tag them with this sort of field. And then when we meet on Mondays, we have this view that has the same information and we work through the tickets usually one by one. And we take advantage of the fact that you need to close them and open them. You can just forward through them page by page here. And the ones that the engineering lead is considering putting into the next sprint, he'll mark him yes on this field. His name is Bismarck and I'm Yuri over here. And then on this page, it gets super interesting. He can then assign him to people, put points on the different tickets, and he can start seeing how those totals add up before he makes them officially part of the sprint. So he can plan around that. And then he can send any one ticket with this button or he can send all of them in one hit, boom. They're all on the sprint. Once things are on the sprint, we have a Kanban view of that. And this has some built-in filters. You know what, I'm gonna unlock the document so we can look at the filters. So we do things like if it's in the following stages, not void, not on hold. And if it's in the current sprint, put it over here. Something really cool, by the way, we have this other page, sprints. So this is a field where you set whatever the current sprint is. It actually happens automatically. So we refer to this field. So what this page does is it says any ticket where the sprint field says 
the value that is right here, put it in the Kanban board because we're working on that right now. That just happens automatically. The individual people that are working on it can filter by the Epic or label or just by them. QA loves doing that. They just go, just show me bugs. And they ask for this. Look, it took one minute to use conditional formatting for all the bugs to be read. That, that was great. And we have multiple views of this. A lot of people, because they're used to Jira, they still look at a Kanban, but I maintain that it's actually better to look at it as a list that's grouped. It, it really, this is the same Kanban board, except across the top, it's across the left that you see the grouping for to do it in progress. I find mm -hmm. this a lot more useful. And in fact, the one that I use, I add another level of categorization for priority. And that's what I care about. As things are moving from to do to in progress to ready for review and ready for QA, I'm always paying attention to the highest tickets about what's going on. Now, in terms of the automation, we do a couple of cool things here. When you move a ticket, from the column for QA into my column, this is my initials, and the automation assigns a ticket to me and I get a notification. And then if I, if, if instead of accepting the ticket, I reject it, it reassigns it to QA automatically. So that that's a nice little thing that happens. At the end of the sprint, there's a bunch of tickets that I moved over here to accept it. And only the engineering lead has this button enabled. Actually, let's look at it. So not user. So if it's not this guy, the button is not enabled. So it's a nice little checks and balances here. He's the only one that can click on it. So when he clicks on this button, all the tickets that are incompleted get marked closed with today's date. Whenever he clicks on that, and then we create a new sprint automatically over here. This button gets clicked, a new sprint gets created. And then over here, all the tickets that were still to do in progress or ready for review get moved to the next sprint. Mm -hmm. All that happens with just one call. Boom. Super slick. And it took only me part time over the space of maybe three weeks, a little bit here and there to get it to this point. And then I started adding some enhancements. We have a bunch of different views. I showed a few. I went to complete the tickets. And by the way, we only have a few weeks worth. So you can see that we started doing this September 26th. If we go to completed tickets, I showed this to the team and they loved it. Of the tickets we completed, how many are bugs or, or new features? And our biggest category is order dashboard. And then order dashboard, what are the subcategories that we have there? Who creates the most tickets? Everybody loved being able to look at that, that part of it and how that works. And once they saw this, different people on the team started asking for different things. Just two days ago, I was meeting there with a the QA lead and she said, you know what? I need a view that works in the following way. So we just spent five, I think it was 10 minutes maybe, setting it up for her. Go, look, I need a view that works in this way and I need a view that works in this other way. And boom, in a few moments, she had exactly what she needed. And then she shared a new idea for something that's, that's really cool. So I'm going to go, what I did then is I copied the document because I didn't want to, I didn't want to modify my live document. So I'm going to go to my docs and notice that it says copy. here. So what we did is we have this feature that I didn't mention before that, that I'll explain a little bit now. When I go to all tickets, any ticket can have a parent. And this is how we track subtasks. So if ticket 357, had a bunch of subtasks, all those other tickets would have 357 in this field. That works super well for us because that means they're all part of the same table with the same reports. It, it, by the way, Jira doesn't do that. That was a huge motivation to move up for that. Subtasks are completely different from tickets and we couldn't get that working. So here, the only difference is that some tickets have a parent, but they're on the same table. So once QA, once QA saw that, she said, look, why don't we add one more field, and you can see it in the page here, one more field for reopen bug. So if we catch a bug in production, I make a ticket for the bug, and we talk about what was the original ticket that talked about this work? And I'll tag it reopen bug, and we'll link it to that original work. Now, this is not complete. As you can see, this is work in progress, but what we will be able to do is show us 
how many points were burning up fixing things that made it all the way into production, right? Because I'll be able to do a view that says, show me only reopen box. And then not only that, we, we laugh, we says, you know what? We'll be able to run totals per person. And we'll be able to say how many of the different developers, how many of those things that we having to fix that they made it all the way into production. And, and I already talked about it with the team. It's not about blaming people. It's about, hey, these eight points or whatever, that could have gone towards other work. We want to be good about catching things like that. So once the rest of the team saw what I was doing with Coda, we started coming up with even more ways to use it. And then we do it together. I'll go, look, let's just, stay, let's just stay on this call. Let's take care of that. And boom, we have new capabilities. So yes, it's been really great for us. That's, thanks for the overview. At a high level, you were, you were tracking individual tickets in Jira. And then what would you say were the main constraints or problems that you were having in Jira that you weren't able to do? It sounds like one of them was just visualizing data in a certain way, but can yeah, you speak to my, other my, my constraints? Big one is, to, to me, it felt like there was just one dimension only in Jira, like I would have a ticket, it would show up at the bottom. Yes, I can give it a, a priority. It can be a bug or a story or a task, but I couldn't filter them in different ways. I know there's mm -hmm. the Jira query language and something, I spent a little bit of time yeah, on JQL, it. Yeah, JQL, I believe it's called. Too difficult. Yeah, it was too difficult, too complicated. I didn't want to invest time into it. So I kept suffering through. I put things at the bottom. I, I look at the list. I move things to the top manually, and then we talk about it. And it went from that to night and day to what I showed you that I can slice them and dice them in a bunch of different ways now in how I'm keeping track of the tickets that I need to be paying attention to. That, that was the big... That was my big difference. By the way, in the beginning, I was just doing that and I was using the Jira pack to send them still to Jira. And then at some point I realized, why send them over there if we can manage everything better by keeping it in Coda? And that was just a few weeks ago, as you saw from the, the, the small number of sprints. Oops, which one is it? The small number of sprints that we've been, that we've been doing over here. Okay. And what do you think is, uh, aside from tracking the tickets and the bugs and the sprints, have you thought about other ways that you want might think about using Coda in your specific role? Yeah, we are. We use it for regressions. Like we made a template for all the steps that happen in the regression, which the, the QA lead had it in, a, not a Microsoft Word, but an open office document. Mm -hmm. So we're moving that into Coda and then I had a, a complicated list of all the permutations that we wanted to test on a difficult, on, on a, on a complex part of the software. So it was very useful. Actually, maybe we can take a very quick look if I can find it quickly. If I go to engineering and we look here under QA and we look here. Oh yeah. He, look, here, here's a great one. So back in testing, at some point we decided to move to a more detailed unit testing which what mm -hmm. happens in projects is you just start doing stuff quick. We said, you know what, let's slow down and make sure we got really good unit testing. So the engineering leader said, look, we need to track what the progress is. So we, together, we made this table and I was able to very quickly set some tracking here. What are the priorities? What is the progress? Conditional formatting is what you see here. If you finish this part, if you finish that part. And then based on priorities, things move to the top area that we're paying attention to. And we now have a ritual where on Fridays after the sprint demo, we update this and we see how the code coverage on the unit testing is increasing. So it became accountable to all of us, not just saying we're going to do more unit testing, but we were able to quickly create a document to track that and that's funneled the focus into making sure that we're making progress on that as opposed to just paying lip service to doing unit testing. And I think the other one is, no, it's not this one. If I can find it quick. If I can find it quick, I will tell you it was in the QA page. Yeah, maybe I don't have it handy. It, it's, it, it, was a, it was a way to use the way that Coda allows you to group to multiple levels. So we took what was like 200 tests that we wanted to run and we were able to group it into different categories start marking off the progress and all that. That was one of the first things I did that, that turned out to be super useful. Got it. Actually, I think it is this. Yeah, it is this document that you see we have 
lots of levels worth of grouping the different tests that we need to do mm -hmm. and, and we're tracking it by day. So I only foresee that we find more and more use cases, for example, in what, what we internally keep calling JIRA, even though now is 100% CODA, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an integration with Bitbucket. We don't use GitHub, we use Bitbucket because we were on Atlassian. So we're going to make it so that a developer can open a, uh, not a, oh, looks on a blanking out, not a branch, but a, not, not yeah, not, not a fork, but a branch. They can just create their own branch and they take it right here. We're going to put a button here, they'll make an API call into Bitbucket, make a branch, connect it into this. There's even a, there's even a pack for that already. I just haven't spent time looking at that. Maybe we can just use the pack that exists already. So yeah, we are now constantly looking at all the different ways that we can integrate this into the different things that we're doing or coming up with new ideas of things we can do that we hadn't thought about before. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for the overview. And it's really interesting to see how it started with just replacing Jira and now it's kind of turning into other aspects of, of QA and even like observability, I think. So it's really interesting seeing how it's kind of spread a little bit within your team. Yeah, you know, once you get over the hump of understanding the architecture of documents, pages, formulas, the automations, once you build that model in your head, you go, oh, this is really straightforward. It's just a little bit of a of a hump to get to, and then and then it becomes really simple. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Sherry. That was a really great overview.